now. The Queen's Diamond Jubilee Tour of the Northwest has had a bit of wildlife theme today. It features rhinos and ducks, though the ducks had wheels, not wings. Yeah, uh, the Queen took to, uh, took to the water in a tour of Albert Dock in Liverpool on a bright yellow amphibious vehicle, which is called a duck. And she also saw how Chester Zoo are breeding rare rhinos. Our reporter Andy Gill is in Liverpool to tell us about the Queen's Day. And Andy, it's all quiet there now, but I bet it was very exciting earlier on. It was, and we're at the waterfront because this is where the Queen started the Liverpool leg of her visit. She drove along in front of the three graces here. She also went to Chester Zoo, as you mentioned, and opened the new £30 million Orford Jubilee Park in Warrington as well. My guess, though, is that the part she'll remember about today involved a lot of water and a very big splash. This is all about 60 years on the throne, but the Yellow Duck Marine the Queen rode in today has been around even longer. It dates from World War II. And here's what it does in Liverpool these days. Royal passengers and all. Not much reaction from Her Majesty. We had to go, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> we think it was hair anyway. She and Prince Philip got the full tourist experience. Fabulous. Absolutely uh, once-in-a-lifetime experience. Don't think many people have this on their bucket list. Back at Merseyside Maritime Museum, she received flowers from Brownies, also celebrating their Diamond Jubilee. She took the flowers off us, but she wondered if they was for her. The crowd loved it all. I was really amazed because it was my first time to see her. Yes, very exciting. I don't know, she's just a, a cultural icon, bigger than Queen, bigger, like the band, bigger than... I don't know, David Beckham. I just think she's a fantastic example of public service. And if you've been doing a wonderful job for the last 60 years. Earlier at Chester Zoo, drizzle didn't dampen enthusiasm. I came here from Arizona in uh, the United States of America, where we love the Queen, and I came here just to see the Queen. The Queen took the monorail to see the zoo's rhinos. I think she's particularly interested in the, uh, in the rhinos, and I think that was because we were explaining that rhinos are very similar in their personalities to horses, and of course there's a, there's a connection there. Well, I thought she looked very beautiful, and it's just really, really exciting. She got a closer look at the rhinos too, and performed some official opening duties. Back in Liverpool later, she had a lunch of Northwest delicacies, including Wirral asparagus, and gooznar chicken. Well, hundreds of people waited outside the museum to see if she'd do a walkabout. She didn't, but what did happen is that the Royal Police Protection Officers, serious chaps with a serious job to do, went to the barriers and physically lifted out small children uh, with posies of flowers and took them along so that they could give their flowers to the Queen, about half a dozen of them. It's what I think you call a nice touch. Indeed it is, Andy. What a lovely touch. Thank you. And you can see more about the royal family's close links to the region this Saturday in a special programme, The Queen and I, 60 Years in the Northwest. That's at 4.20 on BBC One. Lots of you have been waiting out for hours in the last few days, including Roger and myself, uh, to catch a glimpse of the Queen on her Diamond Jubilee tour. But perhaps the most spectacular event of the Queen's year will be on June the 3rd, when over a thousand boats take to the River Thames in London to create one of the largest flotillas the country's ever seen. Yeah, one of the vessels lucky enough to be taking part in that historic event is the Queen of the Lake, which normally carries tourists across Windermere in the Lake District. And Peter Marshall has been to see how the little wooden vessel is being prepared for what will be an incredible journey. It'll be quite a journey for this grand old lady, a 500-mile round trip from the sedate waters of Windermere to the tidal rush of the Thames to join a fantastic flotilla. I would imagine it, it, it may well be uh, a little nerve-wracking for some of the skippers, but it will be, I would imagine it will be a fantastic sight. Built in 1949, she's on the National Register of Historic Vessels, but she's having a bit of a facelift for her royal appointment. We're having to take two of the seats out at the rear here because we're going to be on the water for a long while, so we have to fit a toilet in, which is going in this area here, and a small buffer unit here. We've had to put uh, an extra 
heavy duty cleat on the front because we're going to be mooring up overnight in the middle of a river which has never been done on this boat before. And of course with it being a historic vessel it's had to be brass and in keeping. Can't do anything that will spoil it. Well I'm proud really, I mean I served my uh, apprenticeship as a boat builder on these boats so I'm very proud, I want everything to be spot on, I want everything I'm going beyond the call of duty with this one. She served the royal family before, carrying Prince Charles in spring 2010 after Cumbria's devastating floods. The Queen of the Lake will be lifted out of the water on May the 28th to begin her journey south. We're having it on a, a large haulage wagon. So we've had to make special cradles. And being an old boat, we've got to be careful of movement and drying out. And just making sure it's protected and well secured. Don't want it dropping off on the M6 anywhere. There'll be no mistaking her Cumbrian roots when she takes her place among the thousand strong flotilla. Oh, clearly, we're going to have a host of golden daffodils, giant daffodils made by pupils from uh, the Windermere School, a fantastic image of the Queen made by images of Keswick, and also we've got a superb flag designed by pupils in Windermere and being made into a flag by pupils in Keswick. The Thames trip will mean she's out of service to the usual Lakeland tourists for around a fortnight. I'm sure it will be worth it on the day to have Cumbria represented on that stage. Can you imagine a national pageant without Cumbria there? It just wouldn't have been right. Peter Marshall, BBC Northwest Tonight, Ambleside.